What's going on YouTube people? Welcome back to the channel and thanks for joining me for episode 2 of the Solihull Moors to the Premier League save. So in the first episode we had gone from the start of the game to January. The January transfer window had opened. Obviously there were no transfers in the first part of the save. We rolled with the initial squad until the 1st of January. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at what's happened in January. We've rolled on to February the 6th. There are a few new faces to come in. We have sold a player. We're going to go through that, and then we're going to run through all of the things that have happened in January, show the league table, show you the schedule, those kinds of things. So let's get rolling. Let's jump into it and show you what happened in the transfer market. So if we go to the transfer history, we can see we signed three players, but we did let one player go. Andrew Dallas going to Sheffield Wednesday. We had a bit of a tug of war with them. They came in low ball us with a £20,000 offer. We insisted we wanted 50 or nothing. It turns out that Sheffield Wednesday aren't very good at bargaining because they actually paid up pretty much what we wanted and we got a few add-ons added to his contract too uh, we got forty one and a half thousand going up to fifty thousand plus a percentage of the next fee so i think it was a fair deal uh, we needed to address the balance of the wage bill so that kind of got a thousand pounds i think it was off of the wage bill and it allowed us that money to play with when we went to sign players so the three players that we bought in the first was shiloh tracy a free transfer he comes in as a bit of a utility player can play on the right and the left can play through the middle also as a striker if you look at his main attributes pace acceleration uh, not a great one for the future at the age of 25 and i think that he will be a bit of a rotation option when we need an option but Nonetheless, he's a squad player that comes in and gives us a little bit more depth and can also cover the gap that was left with the sale of Dallas. The next player to come in was Charlie Raglan. He's a player who had previously played for Cheltenham, Oxford, Port Vale and Chesterfield. An experienced centre-back who I think at the age of 30 is probably just about to start hitting his best days. Uh, it's a short-term deal, comes in for two years, so that it's, it, overall it's not too bad 600 pound wages didn't want the world luckily knows that he's not going to be a first team regular all of the time so hopefully he's a player that can just step into the back line when we need him and the final player to come in in the january transfer window was a brennan and dickinson and as you can see by his little uh, chart in the top right hand corner he can play anywhere on the left he can play anywhere on the right it's also a little bit awkward playing through the middle but he can do it so this player is all about that versatility of being able to play in multiple roles uh, i think he's a player actually who has a pretty decent set of skills for this level you can see he's played for teams such as carlisle exeter mk dons colchester so he knows what it's like to be in these kinds of leagues uh, he has decent pace decent acceleration good long shots free kick taking dribbling and crossing so a player who can step into multiple positions and perform quite well so in terms of the um transfer window didn't spend any money managed to recoup a bit of money looking at the finances we are overspent despite bringing that money in for dallas uh, we are now overspent by about 700 pounds i think that is it might be a bit more it's more like 900 pounds uh, but I think that in terms of the players that we got in, they're definitely value for what we needed. So, in terms of the players coming in, when we left off last time, we were top of the league. We have since lost the lead at the top of the league. As you can now see, we are one point behind Woking. They did somehow have two games in hand. I don't know whether that was the case at the end of the last video. But... They won their two games in hand and then they actually beat us to take over at the top of the Vanarama National League. Looking at the schedule, uh, we left off on the 1st of January. So we've had an up and down run of form where things have started to look a little bit shaky if I'm honest. We had the board step in at one point and ask us what we needed to do to turn results around, which I think is a bit harsh. Uh, we played six games in this period. We won three, we lost three. First of which was a 2-1 victory against Ebb's fleet. Uh, Carl Morrison and Callum Maycock scoring for us. Stephen Walker scoring for Ebb's fleet United. Uh, Borenwood, we lost 2-1. Warburton scoring, but Glenfield getting the two goals for them. Then Oldham, we won in the FA Trophy fourth round. 
2-1 in that game. We lost to Woking 3-2 in the Vanarama National. And I think that's both of those games against Woking that we have lost. We lost the first one 4-3. We've lost this one 3-2. So every time we play against Woking, it's a money matchup. We then lost to South End. We lost 2-1 in the Vanarama National. And we beat Gateshead last time out 3-0. So, as I said, that leaves us in the Vanarama National having played 29 games, 20 wins, 2 draws, 7 losses, 31 as a goal difference and 62 points. We have Dallas, even though he's no longer with the club, he had 22 goals, but Warburton's not too far behind with 18. Average rating is 7.30 for Dallas. Sabara has 19 assists currently and Newton 9. We have Dallas with 5 player of the match awards. And Newton covering and uh, dribbling 5.39 dribbles per 90 minutes. If we look at the squad planner and see if that has changed for our assistant, so our current best 11 according to him is booting goal Newton, Raglan, Howe, Clark, Brogan, Osborne, Maycock. Dickinson on the left, Warburton and Kelly up top. Looking at some of the strengths, finishing. So hopefully we're creating enough. We were having a lot of shots and we were creating a lot of chances for Dallas when he was scoring goals. Warburton has managed to score goals too. So hopefully Kelly and Dickinson can continue that. Handling the goalkeepers, midfield depth, aerial reach, leadership. We have a squad full of leaders and strong characters, which is hopefully a good thing as we push on for promotion into the Football League. Uh, weaknesses, punching for the goalkeepers, wage budget, we are spending 925 over the wage budget, leaving limited options. Now the plan that going into the summer, we have quite a few big contracts that I don't think are going to get renewed. And also, if we do manage to get promoted, hopefully it'll free up a little bit of equity for us to go out and improve the squad i do have a plan in place if we get there if we don't it might be a bit difficult but i have every faith that this team this tactic will get us in to the football league at the first time of asking uh, overall depth in the squad is still quite bad if you remember at the start we had a very shallow squad we did promote the three youth team players in the end so we now have a squad that is bigger than it was but when you still look at it it's still threadbare and you can see that the starting 11 are now starting to get worn down as we go out throughout the season uh, we do have some replacements now to come in we picked up those fresh legs in uh, Tracy Dickinson and Raglan at, in, at the heart of the defence so hopefully we will manage to get through into the next part of the season looking at the schedule it's going to be a tough running. It starts off, we've got Kings Lynn, Aldershot, Concord in the FA Trophy fifth round. It'd be good if we can continue to go well in that competition. I think if we could go and win that and get promoted from the Vanarama National, it would be a very successful first season. Some highlights in terms of games coming up. So obviously we have the likes of Maidenhead, Chesterfield, Fylde, Warsaw, as I said in the uh, last episode, shouldn't be in this division, but they are there. So that's a local derby. So we'll look forward to that. And then we've got Rochdale on the 4th of May. And that should wrap the league up. Anything else we need to go through? Uh, let's have a look at the club vision. Uh, it says work within the wage budget was one of the actionable objectives. We are struggling with that, obviously. I mean, luckily for us at the top there, it says that our job security is untouchable. Uh, the fact that we have led the league, I think, has contributed to that. Um, record Vanarama National top half finish. We are going to smash that. Reach the FA Cup proper. I think we did reach the first round so we passed that reached the last stage of the FA Trophy we're currently on course for that obviously in the fifth round there as I said we'd like to go deeper into that board feedback in terms of what they wanted sign players under the age of 22 for the future we haven't really had chance to implement that yet the only three players that we could sign was a result of a player leaving so hopefully going into the new season we'll be able to look at players that fit that criteria we did promote the youth team players which I hoped might have 
added to that under 22s but it is bringing the average age of the squad down uh, develop players using the club youth system we currently don't have one but awaiting the youth intake now that we've promoted the three players i shall have a look at that before we go uh, play possession football play attacking football play entertaining football so some of the good things they are delighted the team's challenging for a place in the playoffs However, if this good run of results continues, we could find ourselves in a better position. Pleased with the comfortable 3-0 victory against Oldham. Pleased with the 2-1 fourth round FA Trophy win against Oldham. Also, disappointed to have lost to Boreham Wood. Disappointed to lose to Woking. Disappointed to lose to Southend. In terms of supporters, it normally mirrors what the board are saying. We have an A-plus from the supporters they could not be happier with the job that we are doing uh, get the better of redditch if we play them don't think we have played them record vanarama national top half finish we have passed that already we are going to finish hopefully in top spot and they pretty much have the same things that the board have in terms of the highlights and the criticisms uh, one thing i did want to show you was the squad not in the squad, sorry, in the dev centre. Uh, if we go to the youth candidates and show you our intake. So it says up in the top right hand corner, it's an excellent intake. Terrific group of players coming through and has the potential to be a real golden generation for the club. Looking at these grades, I don't think it's going to turn into anything. There are a healthy number of fullbacks in the pipeline that gets a B. Goalkeepers, lacks quality. Aren't any defensive midfielders look like they'll trouble the first team? Central midfielders isn't a great year. Wingers, it continues. So I just hope that we get at least a couple of players that we can sign, even if we put them just on those youth contracts that fill our youth team up. If any of them start to develop, that's great. And then if we reach League Two, hopefully we can look at bringing some better youngsters in that will hopefully help us to progress throughout the save. So that's the update to the 6th of february 2024 in the next episode we're going to be pushing forwards to the end of the vanarama national league campaign we're going to find out if we can get promoted at the first time of asking if we do it will certainly be a difficult time up in league two unless we can strengthen hopefully that will happen in the summer and if we do get promoted then hopefully the board will back us in the transfer market it's a lot of hopefuls it's a lot of maybes there's a lot of things that could happen in this save one thing i do think is going to happen is we are going to make this a success whether by hook or by crook we are going to do it right then if you're with me at this point of the video firstly a big thank you i cannot thank you for the support enough really cannot bang it home to that youtube at the moment it's a little bit all over the place we have days where we lose subs gain subs it's a little bit all over the shop so if you've stuck with it and you've enjoyed the content enjoying the save so far please hit the like button hit the subscribe button leave me a comment whether there's something i could do better or there's something you enjoy interaction with the channel is the thing that we need to keep this going and i really cannot thank you all enough of the people that have done it uh, enough i really really do appreciate every single time that somebody interacts with the channel but for this one i'm going to leave it there before you go don't forget check out the rest of the channel let's plays hints tips tutorials wonder kids let's plays there is something for everybody here on the channel but for this one i'm going to leave it there i'll see you in the next episode when we're at the end of the first season